It is in case of US and developed countries, not in developed countries, not in case of Bangladesh, of course. But uh, it might happen that nowadays we are going to Saudi Arabia, other countries sending our labor force. But time perhaps coming not very far away that this foreign artificial intelligence will take out our jobs, skip up our citizens with jobs, particularly white collar jobs. What is your comment? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, as you said, every industrial uh, revolution had its impact. So this is the fourth one. So there were times when the first one, the second one, even the third one, uh, everybody said that in the very first one, when engines and other things came out, or the guy who used to pour coal in the engine, so when the, it was not needed, so he were, he and what happened to his family, they found out something else. Human beings are like so crazy. I mean, they find out, always they would find a way out. I was reading a book called Guns, Jumps and Steel, where the uh, author was explaining how and why civilization and human beings flourish differently in different parts of the world. For example, uh, they were trying to say that in Africa, uh, predominantly 100,000 years before they found human civilization. In Polynesia, which is like in Asia Pacific and Papua New Guinea and in Australia, they found it like 13,000 or even less time. But if you now look at that in Africa, is still comparative with full respect to them, they have their own lifestyle. I mean, we, we define development like US is developed, Africa is not developed, which is I personally don't believe because Africans, they still find, yeah, I'm gonna go hunt the Bushmen, so I'm gonna go hunt and eat it. That's their way of life, but Americans think that, oh, I'm gonna go to a superstore and all frozen and packed. So they call it development. So I'm not gonna go there. The point is uh, to answer your question is that every uh, industrial revolution had its uh, impact, side effects, human being always maneuvered around it. So I don't see there is a uh, very uh, immediate uh, threat to white collar, blue collar, whatsoever. But so coming back, as I take the opportunity on AI, uh, I was grown up in 80s, so I had a fantastic childhood and I loved Knight Rider. The car could talk to the guy. Uh, 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 David Hasselhoff, the guy was, so the car could talk to him. And I was so fascinated if ever in my life I, if I can talk to any of my gadgets. Now I can, and let me talk to my gadget. Just uh, one minute. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna take a little time. How's the weather? Just a second, Sundar Pichai was correct. Okay, Google. How's the weather in Tata? I just talked to my gadget, so my childhood dream is absolute reality now. So this is just a tiny bit of thing. Even if I walk 10 minutes faster for it continuously, my phone gives me notification, 10 minutes workout has been detected. Simple. Even my phone and when I'm going to sleep, they tell me that you are off 1500 calorie today. Because normally, so AI is around, very simple. I'm just I'm just being very simple. But what do I want out of it? So if I I may, a little bit, that uh, there are two very interesting things is coming up around AI. One is assistive lifestyle, and that will come from predictive analytics. Prediction. We can predict because I can predict what's my friend going to react to this gift or that movie or that thing because I know him. I have interacted with him, and that's the thing that uh, I was telling about big data, and then I was telling about smart data. So what I'm trying to say that there are a few things that human beings need to be uh, rescued from. We don't need, we are, we are superbly, superb engineered device, we are ourselves. We are defined to actually go to space and different even other place on separate dimension, rather than picking a box from warehouse to something else. We were designed to do something greater, that's what I believe. It is taking a little time. AI is here to assist us there. It will help us from this, all these very monotonous, very repetitive work, so that we can, human as a race, can concentrate on the next level of thing. Now coming back, uh, I want, AI is quite interesting, I find it is an art. What happened in the bathroom this morning, I want my common to take care of it. How is that? In the bathroom today, I peed, and I did the number two. My common is supposed to know, experimenting those stool and those urine, that what was my health, what is happening, is there any cholesterol, is anything is happening, that's what my common is supposed to tell me, because nowadays, if I have to understand those things, I have to 
একদিন না খেয়ে থাকতে হবে when i have to go to the doctor when i have to take a cup then do that it is very embarrassing do that then put it in the lab report next day people after 10 15 years will laugh oh for this blood test for this urine test for all these things you used to go to hospital then to oh my god that's what they're going to tell because my comrade has to analyze all these things and then now it has supposed to tell me shukhan in the lunch you must eat that fiber more today because i have just checked that is not correct that is low in this that is what ai is pretty helpful on the contrary i want ai to tell me i'm just saying from a consumer point of view i'm a business developer and marketing guy i'm not a tech guy so i have no idea how the data is being managed or what goes on inside oracle or what goes on in an nvidia chip or something i have no idea and i don't want to learn that so what i'm trying to tell i actually want my phone to tell me or the devices wearables and everything to tell me that and it predict that i'm in shonar gaon on a friday uh, saturday where i'm supposed to be so well i'm supposed to be with my family i want my machine to tell me shukhan you are supposed to be home not here so that's how i see ai as a very fantastic tool now having said that i came on to machines and i fell in love, fell in love with machines in the navy i was in the navy and in 1999 we were taken for a tour inside a very advanced ship which is bns bongomundu which is one of the finest ships and which had helipads and everything and all the guided system we had a class uh, in uh, air uh, nt air top gun room we were being taught and i was the for the first time i could stand sitting inside a room there is a screen in front of me and my instructor tells you can anything you want to log i was on the corner fully channel anything you want to log just log sir log so i was there is a thermal camera there is other infrared camera and i was just in the channel i was trying to lock a keyboard uh, attack on the champan chidame that was crossing then i was locking that and my sir instructor was smiling shukran why don't you lock the crow that flying over the champan so there was this tiny and i locked it and the gun enter big tons of gun was moving with this that's like 20 years back i'm talking about the new safe sir uav unmanned aerial vehicle So why are, what I'm telling sir about regarding jobs and everything did all this assistive jobs all this thing people reminding up ration and meeting up say that other thing these are gone so that people has more time to concentrate on others we have 13.6 billion years normally if i can am, am i correct that that the universe is in place we have been uh, we haven't explored anything it's still going to mars is like pretty uh, wow such a big deal to us okay. i think the pace of change is pretty fast it is happening so superbly ai with all this predictiveness and all these things is here to support us in a big deal having said this last thing that i want to mention still we are doing some funny things for example carrying a phone in one hand occupying one hand which is diminishing 50% of my capacity physical capacity We are all carrying a five-inch, six-inch device, and one hand is. Oh, I have seen people falling on the road and other things because both hands we can keep balance. We are always keeping one hand. So this thing is not smart. It will probably move into wearables and then can build something, neurons on something. That's actually going to happen because I'm not designed to carry something all the time. For example, you are now carrying these two phones. You are all your brain is. Oh, I have to take the phone after I'm done with the thing. This is absolutely unsmart thing to do though we call this thing smartphone and everything. Now coming back, I work with strategic projects for projects that is for the future. Sometimes people do not understand future. So that's why people react on a different manner. But having said that, recent Facebook uh, scandal scared me a lot because data, what I am doing, what I am texting, what I am saying, how is my health? My health doesn't matter. But uh team cooks help in apple it matters that one simple information can drop their share price a lot so machine will probably know that his health is not well and if somebody can hack into that information and everything so it comes with give and take it's fourth industrial revolution it's eminent it's going to happen but for a country like us i will really agree with aman bhai that we often we are on the uh, not at the uh, front of the race we are at the back but a lot of our young people and a lot of our senior people are thinking about it. we have sent a satellite last night so i am an optimistic person i always blog about optimism a lot of people make fun about me that come on you are one of the poor country why you talk about hope and everything because hope is what differentiates us so i truly believe if we start uh, thinking on it if we start acting on it machines humans us poor rich we can live together and 
jobs, new jobs to create. Thank you, sir. So thank you, Shukran. Uh, this is very important because if we do not allow our data to accumulate somehow, because we do not accumulate our data, we even do not keep our prescription. How do in future we'll design our drug for our own purpose? A man-specific drug design, man-specific treatment. How could we do it? So this is a challenge in the both way. It's a paradox. <laughs> If you don't give your data, then your personalized medicine, personalized things are learning. On the other hand, you have to compromise something. Sir. One thing. Another thing is that I think you can touch this area. It's been okay said that this AI might create end of human race. So what do you think? Do artificial intelligence is going to destroy humanity or human beings or human race? Because <coughs> This artificial intelligence is certainly going to surpass human brains because we work individually, most of the cases, but sometimes in groups. But when we talked about artificial intelligence, they, this. So let's come to Mr. Sulaiman. You know, what is your comment in this thing? Sir, within two minutes. Sir, two minutes. Thank you, sir. sir. Uh, there is a book called The World is Flat by Thomas L. Friedman where he explains that how this uh, internet uh, and all these things actually made the world really flat. I mean, there is a huge thing in the Middle Age that world is flat around. It's not that thing, I'm metaphorically speaking. So uh, I think uh, this internet, IoT, AI, all these things are opening up new opportunities for folks like so-called underdeveloped part of the world. Now, any guy, I know a uh, freelancing company from Jashore handles NBA, National Basketball Association, all these things in the uh, United States. So I think this has actually opened up opportunity for a uh, lot of other, like this continent, this region, in South region, all these places, I can see somebody from Kathmandu, somebody from Pokhara, somebody from Ahmedabad, somebody from Manil Singh, Dhaka, has now the real chance to take part in the real deal. So if you have a great idea, if you can really think, you can now do it and you can communicate with anybody. So I personally believe that uh, this is actually happening. This is good for us. So this opening is becoming flat. But the thing is that we often, as somebody was telling from Pran, we often believe that we are not worthy enough. For example, if now I'll put that I made one of my friends make the video, and if I post this post this video, a lot of our intellectuals will tell, oh my god, in Bangladesh you are talking about AI, hey, come on, come on, it's you are not Google, you are not Sundar Pichai. So we need to accept. We have to understand and accept that we should talk, we should practice, it doesn't matter, I have no capacity to make Google Assistant, but I have to talk. And we should be able to freely give feedback. That is the thing they should change. And if somehow you can send it to Mr. Pichai or Google, they probably will change. So I think all the things are actually opening interesting and beautiful gates for us, our youth, and our IT profession. Thank you so very much. So, uh, you know.